from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Here you go, boy. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 TOM. 1 800 5 800 866. It's like this 101, the ongoing on air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. Toll free at 1 800 5 800 TOM. It's 1 800 5 800 866. John, you're in the classroom with your professor on Like Is 101. Hello. Hey, Father, how are you doing? Doing great, son. All right. Here's my question. Yeah. So when you take a chick out for drinks, how do you evade all the, the serious talk? I mean, how do you get around all that stuff? Let her talk. Let her talk. What you she ask you say as little as possible. Always direct it back at her. Ask her what she thinks, how she feels. Let her hang herself. Okay. Because I'm always guilty of, you know, Taking a girl out and you're just sitting there, you don't know what else to talk about. So you, you know, you start talking about family crap. You start talking about where to go to school, you know, and then it starts getting too serious. So, well, you know, you can always talk about music. You can always talk about the thing is to always get her opinion about everything. By, by the way, that accomplishes two things. Okay, one is you don't put your foot in your mouth. And two is, she actually thinks you give a rat's ass what she thinks, which, yeah, you, just, which you don't, of course. Just nod your head and smile, right? Right. Uh-huh. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Good. Women love that. They actually think you care if you do that. Okay. You're not going to tell her you love her or you care or that you could care. You're just going to, you know, wrinkle your eyebrows. Mm. <laughs> Is that so? Mm-hmm. Like that? Yeah, because see, usually what happens is either I'll, I'll start asking questions just out of impulse just so I can keep the conversation going. You know, either they'll get scared off because they don't want anything serious or... You know, I'll be, they'll be asking me questions. I'll just be like, wow, you know, she obviously wants to make this, you know, more than one date. So, but ask her stupid questions about, you know, music or movies. Chicks okay. care about that stuff. Right. What movies has she seen lately? <laughs> right. Okay. Hey, did you see that Britney Spears story? Always something that has no religion, no politics. Yeah, talk about current events and stuff like that. Stuff that chicks care about. And you, if you don't know what chicks care about, you know, watch that TMZ show on TV or watch, uh, you know, Entertainment Tonight. That's the stuff chicks care about. Those shows are evil. They do a lot of market research. They know exactly how chicks think, and they know what chicks care about. Okay. So i got to do a little homework here. It never hurts to do a little homework. You just get the, uh, you know, the top five things chicks are talking about. And you only have to watch those shows once or twice to pretty much get the whole agenda. All right. Watch some HGTV with some Martha Stewart or something. Nah, that's if you're dating your mom's friends. <laughs> that's true. Okay. I mean, right. the, these you, chicks don't own an H or a G. HGTV is unnecessary. Yeah. Well, I met some chicks that are into that crap, so. Well, uh, fine. If you know she's into it, bring it up. But most chicks just care about, uh, you know, movies, entertainment, gossip. Yeah, what's going on with Britney Spears? What's going right. on with Paris Hilton? Uh, that's right. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Father. I appreciate the advice. Son, I'm here to help. Can you take me out uh, Dan 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 Danny Badaducci suplex style? You have got that one yet? Uh, I don't think we have that one yet. <laughs> All right, how about Kobe style with a bong rip? <laughs> All right, we'll try that one. <laughs> oh. Oh.
This is about us. She's so special to me. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. It's 1-800-5800-TOM on Lycus 101. Let's say hello here. Look at all these calls. Uh, let's say hello here to Ahmed on the Tom Lycus show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ahmed. How are you? Do you care? We all care because we all tune in. Who's all of you? Oh, all of us here on the 605. I see so much headlights and I see so much uh, Lycus uh, stickers. Yeah, very good. You see some Lycus references out there. Very nice. Tom, I called in to talk to you about a long-distance relationship that I used to have. Yeah, that you uh, thought, wait, wait, that you thought you used to have. That I thought I used to have. That's correct. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, used to, I used to talk to this girl online and stuff, and what I, the reason I called here today to tell all those losers out there to get off your ass, find the girl that you want, you know, just like you're just like you're teaching us, Tom. So you know, get off your ass off the internet. It's not worth it. It's a waste of time. And as soon as I started listening to your show, I dumped that bitch. Well, you never had her because she was online. Exactly, Tom. You know, you know, I love your show. You're doing a great, 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 great service to everyone. You need more you than you know. Could you take me out of school? Of course I can. Here you go. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Jimmy, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yes, sir. How you doing? Yes, sir. Great. Good, good. Thanks for taking my call, Tom. Listen, um, I am seeing a lady who's, I'm 28, and she's 46. Um... She has three kids. I know that. I know. Oh, I know about the you're making me sick. Listen, listen, oh, listen, Tom. But the, the youngest one is 18, and they're all moved out. They're all moved out of her house, Tom. So what? Tom, she pays for everything. She pays for everything, man. I'm getting. I just got accepted in the USC uh, grad school. Now I'm paying for that myself. But everything else, she pays for, brother. Yeah, but you realize if the condom slips, she'll have the baby. Yeah, that that's true. That's true. Well, well, well I'm seeing her. I, I haven't really, we haven't really gotten down yet, and I, I totally respect your, uh, your your rules there, man. But, 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 but Tom, she she pays for everything, man. I understand that, but 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 if but if the condom slips, you're going to be paying for it. Okay, I hear you there. All right, all right. That's that, that's fair, man. And and you're right. And try this and, uh, a job. I got a job, man. Try a second job. All right, Tom. Uh, much respect, man. Uh, appreciate the appreciate what you're doing with this class, man. I, I really wish you had a textbook on this, but you know, uh, I am the textbook, Jimmy. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. This is Rochelle on the Tom Like Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I'm new to the Orange Orange County area. I just moved a couple of months ago. Um, I was in a four-year relationship with this guy. And now, you'll note that she's not from the New York area because we're 15 seconds into the call, and she has not told us. She's not called Southern California out here, and she has not said that she is from New York, New Jersey, or Connecticut. No, I'm not. See? That's how you can tell. <laughs> Actually, I'm from the South, but anyway. There you go. <laughs> Um, in a four-year relationship, he, um, my father became ill back in March, and I had to leave him up. By the way, the Yankee fans are all watching the Yankees get the crap kicked out of them right now. They're not, uh, they're not listening it's anyway. music to my ears, so. Most people's ears, dear. <laughs> um, and he, um. While I was gone, we were, we were having some fights before. Um, there was some things that was coming up where his cell phone would ring. He wouldn't answer the phone in front of me. Uh, we were living together. And then he would, you know, the typical sneaking around, um, has to go out, won't pick up his phone, doesn't come home when he says he's going to be home. And and I just didn't want to police him. And so right before I left, he was like, okay, we're going to take a little break, um, work on each other, but <clears throat> we're still together, right? So I go home take care of my father 
um, I was home till my father passed away in July, so I didn't come home till like beginning of March. I mean, the beginning of August, and he never once came to visit. He never once came to a funeral. Anyway, so um, in the meantime, I had this job offer down for to come to move to Orange County. You understand and, that from his point of view, you're not in a relationship. Well, now I, I understand that now. And when I came home to pack things up to move down here, um, that's when I found out he was screwing one of his coworkers. And um, he had already told her he loved her. As a matter of fact, I, ca- I found her number on his cell phone bill, and it was frequent calls, so I figured it out. And I called her, and then we got him on a three-way call with him not knowing I was on the other line. And um, So she didn't know you existed? Well, she knew I existed, but she thought I was long gone out of his life. She thought I was just, you know, finished. All right, so you you ruined whatever he had going, and her? No, actually, it didn't because the bottom line is like, you know, what if a guy wants to screw another girl, that's fine. But if you're in a relationship, my feeling is that be respectful and just let it go, what you're in, and to go and do what you got to do because. Bottom line, everybody has feelings. But you understand, no as I always say, there are no long-distance relationships. People think there are, but there aren't. No. When you leave town for an extended period of time, we had a show about this one time. We talked about how many weeks is it before it becomes like a long-distance relationship instead of you're out of town for a week or two. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think the consensus was 12, 15 days. That was the consensus. More than that, and you are now in a, you're no longer in a relationship. You're in a long-distance relationship, which, of course, is not a relationship at all. Right, right. So when you go away like that, and then the guy doesn't show up at your father's funeral or isn't there to help you or anything, you've already been given the message. You just weren't hearing it. I just don't understand how... Guys, you know, women are insensitive too, but how a guy can be so insensitive at my most vulnerable time. And, and you know, if this was a guy I was just with for a few months and I could... On the air. Oh, I'm sorry. Can't say that word. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but the bottom line is that I don't understand. Now, of course, he's trying to crawl back in my life and he wants to come down here and visit me. And I'm just like not taking his calls. And I'm just, I just don't get it. why I... I want I want him to quit calling me. Dear, just don't take his calls. Don't take his calls. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're enjoying the drama of this. You know, really, I'm not. Well, you no, have caller ID. When you look at it, do you see his name? Yeah. Well, yeah. why are you picking up the phone? I'm going to be honest with you. I really hardly ever pick up the phone, but I have. I've been, I will admit that I've picked it up a couple times. Why? I guess just to, um, I just to hear I, to hear him fight for me. I don't know but there you go. Know. You see, you do <laughs> enjoy it. You just did it. You enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Then stop saying you're sick of him calling. Yeah. You love that he calls. You love that things didn't work out with the chick he screwed on the sign. I don't know. He's still up there, and he still works with us, so who knows? If well, the fact that he wants to get back with you at least part of the time means it isn't as good as uh, you thought it might have been or he thought it might be. Okay, so your advice is just chalk it all to a long... It's definitely now a long-distance relationship because I'm here and he's there. Well, it's not yeah. a relationship at all. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's not. Quick to this call. Yes. Move on. It's hard. it's hard moving to a new area and not knowing anyone. Dear. <laughs> hey, you know what's harder? Let me tell you what's harder. What? Demeaning yourself. By considering dating again a guy who screwed somebody behind your back. Oh, I'm not even thinking of getting back together. Then you don't want to talk to him. Okay. It's done. He made the decision. It's done. But I'm going to tell you, right. when you leave town for more than two weeks, guys think that uh, you're gone for good, or at least you're gone for the long term. Are you serious? Even after being together for so long, guys really do think that way? Well, or at least they start acting that way, yes. We had, we had this as a show once. <sighs> 
You get two weeks. Two weeks off. That's what you get. In my next relationship, I better not travel. <laughs> well, dear, I'm just saying, if you travel, <laughs> keep it short and sweet, or you will you will end up as a long distance relationship. In a long distance relationship, <laughs> is a relationship where people have sex with other people while the first person's out of town. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tom, I really appreciate you taking my call. I'm here to help, dear. Thank you. I oh. love your show, by the way. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Oh, there goes Rochelle. Tom, Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM. The more you educate our men, you're pretty much screwing me over. I mean, I love going out and not taking a penny, just my ID. I mean, come on, cut me some flat. Give a dog a bone. <laughs> I'll give you a bone. It's Like His 101 on the Tom Like His Show. Like His 101, I am your professor. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Doing great. Uh, well, I, I wanted to call because, uh, you know, I was having problems with my girlfriend. I've been with her for about a couple years, you know, give or take. And uh, I have a feeling she's cheating on me, you know. I call her. She doesn't pick up my phone calls. She comes home late. You know, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Well, I, first you need to tell me why at 18 you need a girlfriend. Well, I've, I've known her since I was a little kid, you know, so... So I, I knew lots of people when I was a little kid. I didn't have sex with them or, or date them. Well, I didn't either until we were old enough, you know? Like, well, I knew her for, like, a very long time. And but the fact that you knew her doesn't mean you have to be her boyfriend. Yeah, I know, but we built up a relationship, and, and you know, I really had feelings for her, and I felt... But you're too young to be in a relationship. You're too young to have the judgment to know if that's the right person to be in a relationship with you. Well, you know... And clearly, uh, I'm right, because she's cheating on you. Well, yeah, you, then obviously you are, but, you know, I, I haven't... It hasn't been proven to me 100%, you know? Who cares? Just go do your own thing. When she's missing, you'll be missing. That's true. So you think I should just let her go and, you know, just go on, you know, and leave? And, I mean... Move you on. You you should be dating a variety of chicks. All right. Nobody, well, nobody is with one chick for his whole life anymore. What what planet are you on? Um, well, yeah, it's because, you know, the feelings I had, I thought, I guess I thought they were... Because you're a little kid. Well, I mean, that, I mean, when I was a little kid, I had all kinds of feelings. I, I always like to tell the story of how when I was when I was twelve, I wanted to drive a fire truck. Yeah, but and I thought I'd be good at it. I thought it was good for me. I, other people said, "Oh, you can't drive. You're only 12. I said, "But I know, I know, I would know what I'm doing." Well, yeah, you're right. You're you're right, Tom. You know, I guess I, I am too young. You know, I. I can't. I need to live my life as a, as a, you know, as a man. You know. Of course, I'll bet your dad had more than one woman. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, why would you do that? Why would you have one woman? Yeah, it's true. And, and then he actually told me about that too. You know, like you don't need that. You know. So you, your dad is he's he's an important figure in your life. He knows you. Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he was. Well, then, you know? then, then, why, why are you sitting here like a little puppy dog? She might be cheating on me. Yeah, yeah, she probably is cheating on you. Well, you're right. I mean, you know, I, I th- I'm just gonna, you know, let her go, move on, and you know, just live life like a man. You know. That's what you gotta do. All right, Tom. Thanks a lot for the advice, Tom, and thank you, man. Joe, I'm here to help. He folded pretty quickly. He went from being in love, love, love to like, all right, I'm going to dump her, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> Which shows you how deep the love was. Cindy on Like Us 101. Hello. Hi. How are you, Tom? Great. You know, I have to say, first of all, you had the smoothest voice. You had the best voice for radio. Why? Thank you. Have you heard that before? 
Uh, well, I've heard that from my employers as they sign big, multi-year, multi-million dollar contracts. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's, I am. It's like you could be a singer, I bet. I'll you bet. Know. Well, no, I wouldn't bet on that. No. Um, but one thing I have to ask you, I, I've been listening the last few minutes, and you have a way of saying, I'm here to help. And you pause for a second, and before you say the word help, there's a little pause, and I get the feeling you really want to say, hurt. I'm here to hurt. <laughs> Are you trying to hurt us? Do you feel hurt, Cindy? Well, sometimes I hear the, the, the things you're saying to the people. I think you're hurting their feelings. But I'm helping them. But you're hurting them. I'm giving them tough love. You that's not tough love. I'm kind of old for that. They need but, tough love. You are a counselor. You have the counselor in you. I can see, I can see that. You remind me of Dr. Viscott a little bit. Who? Dr. Viscott, remember? Who? Dr. Viscott on the radio. Viscott. Don't know him. You remember him? I don't know what you're talking you're about. You don't remember Dr. Viscott? I don't know what you're talking about. Dr. Viscott, he was a... He was a How many times are you going to say his name? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh -oh. He was a doctor on the radio. I'm sure he was. I, you know what? Uh, people with their problems. What century was that? Jeez, like maybe eight years ago? Oh, the 20th century. Back in the 20th century? Tom, how old are you? Twelve? Do doesn't matter, dear. I've moved on. No, I mean, he was a good man. He helped people. He had a very, he was very kind-hearted. He was very, he had a good, good voice with people. You're not, you don't have that Dr. Laura voice. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, though, were you back in town on Sunday? Were you back in L.A. on Sunday? Why are you asking? I swear Are you a stalker? God, I saw you. My sister says I'm hallucinating. You saw me? I, I, I swear to God, it was your. It sounded just like your voice. Where did you see me? And wait, I don't know. That's why I couldn't believe you. You were... don't know where you saw me. Were you unconscious at the time? I was conscious. All right, so you, you, how can you not know where you saw me? I just had a feeling it was you because of the voice. All right, but where were you when in you Whittier, thought you saw in me? Whittier, and you had a girl oh, I, was, I was in Whittier you saw on a Sunday. Man, a man with a blonde haired girl, and he came up to me and started talking to me. And he, had, he just had a voice like yours. If it was a blonde haired girl, and a pretty girl. Uh -huh. you think it would be likely to be me if it were a blonde haired girl? Uh -huh. I figured you had a date. And, and where, 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 where were they taking her? I was at the Godmother's Well, where were you? Where in Whittier? Why do you want to know? I'm asking you where you saw me. Around uh, on Greenleaf Avenue. Was I walking down the street? No, you were coming out of. The, you were going. You were approaching a, a store. What a store? 7-Eleven. Oh, I, I was taking a girl on a date to a 7-Eleven. Come on, Tom. You know what I mean. You were stopping into the store for a minute, and you, and you just started. You said something, and you did. So where did I You are a stalker. Oh, please. Now, dare. No, I just think you're neat. You're a neat guy. Oh, I am a neat guy. You yes, very radio. neat. Well, uh, no, you weren't on the radio Monday. It was a repeat. I figured maybe he, he's back in L.A. He had a hot date and he had the flu. Well, if I was in L.A., why didn't I do the show on Monday? Because you had to, it was a repeat because you had a hot date on Sunday. And you so you rest. think when I have a hot date, I just don't show up to work? Because well, you needed to rest after your hot date. After I was with the girl at the 7-Eleven in Whittier, there was a long yeah. drive home. I had to take the 605 to the 210. Oh, oh my God. What a, I had to take the foot of And you think it was me? Yeah. Dear. I think you're really a kind-hearted person. Well, darling, uh, the L.A. Kings played in London on Saturday. See, you called me darling, Tom. Oh. You're a kind-hearted person. Oh, my God. Shut up. Hey, why don't you let Shut your... Up. Why don't you let Shut your... up. Huh? <laughs> why don't you let your wife come on? Shut up. My wife, yes. So, so let me understand this. I should let my wife come on, but I was with my girlfriend at the 7-Eleven in Whittier on Sunday. Can your wife come on? The, can we hear how they feel? You are a stalker. I just want to hear their feelings. Darling, if, you, if you're that much of a stalker, you would know that the Kings played in London on Saturday and Sunday. I don't know about sports. Well, how did you know I was in London? Because I, I listened to you when you, when you were in England. What was I doing in London? You were, you were talking to us from your motel room. No, no, but why was I there? Uh, because that's where you were doing your show. Why? Mm, because you picked different 
more patience. No, I can't. Didn't you hear me tell the reason over and over and over why we were in London? I may have turned the radio off for a minute. What was the reason? A minute? I said it over and over. You were in London for... Could you tell me now? I just said it. Huh? What happened over the weekend in London that I was just telling you? What was the reason? What happened? Oh, you were there for some uh, sports, sports thing, right? Some sports show. Is that what you're there for? The Los Angeles Kings, dear. Oh, my God. Our own, our own team played over there? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not a sports person. But I said it over and over. You don't have to watch sports. I said it. Well, I know. Women kind of tune that out. We don't want to hear about You know how it is with sports. I don't know what yeah. some things are with women, I'll tell you. Are you going to let your wife come on then? You think you'll think about it? You probably no. You can get more money from your bosses. No, I won't get paid a penny if I do that. Well, then pay the wife. They'll do it. I have no interest in doing that. Oh, let them do it. Let them get on the show. Dear, you, you're a stalker. You already have more information than I want you to have. <laughs> Goodbye, Tom. You're wonderful. Bye. Bye. Jesus Christ. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. As I have said on this program many times, if Helen Keller had a granddaughter who's a 9 or a 10, that's a perfect match. And by the way, honey, by the way, honey if you're out there, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show. Is 101 from Hollywood at 1 800 5800 Tom. My name is Tom Likas. I am your professor. We are teaching men how to get more tail for less money. We're teaching women how men think it. 1 800 5800 8666. Nancy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Um, love the show. Got to tell the last. Caller was a nut case. I was screaming, shut up myself. <laughs> it was a nut job. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Anyways, I want to ask you a question. What do you think of people getting back together like marriage second time to the same people? I, I do. I always say I was I have one of the many slogans from my life that have worked well for me. Uh-huh. I don't I don't press the rewind button. Really? Even if you have a child involved and you want to get back? It, 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 it was never what you thought it was in the first place. That's why you split up. You know, that's what I keep telling them. He's the one who wants to get back together after being divorced for four years. That's because his girlfriend dumped him. No, that was a long time ago. Yeah, I know. But uh, he's 34. Do you think there is an age for a man where they one day just want to be married. They What's he been doing? What has he been doing with himself the last four years? He was with this girl and for a couple of years, and then they broke up. They were on and off, on and off. And then, I mean, he's in my life every day because he sees our child every single day. So we have that relationship. You know, we see each other every day. We we are in each other's lives. But why, did, like, you, why did you break up with him? Because he didn't want to be married. All right. Done. But he says now he's ready. Well, he shouldn't have been married the first time. And right. he, uh, he says he's ready now, but he, he's an on and off guy. He's on and off with you. He's on and off with the girlfriend. He's on, he's on and off. That's what he does. You think? Hmm. He's there every day. He's there for your kid. Leave it at that. By the way, what do you think this yeah. does to your kid? Well, that's my fear. If a year from now he decides that, oh, by the way, I don't want to be married anymore, what is that going to do to right. her? Right. I keep telling him. But, but forget, just tell him there's no more discussion. You're not marrying him again. He had his chance. He divorced you. Done. Oh, and he's a listener, too, you know. He goes by the rules. Well, he's not going by the rules because if he goes by the rules, he wouldn't be marrying you. Again? For the second time? He would have married you the first time. Well, we were young. We were 22, and we were dumb and stupid. All right, but then he certainly wouldn't be doing it now. Mm. So my gut feeling is right. 
Yes. Okay. Go with your gut, dear. Huh? Go with your gut. By the way, do you have a boyfriend? Have you been getting late? Probably not. That's why you'd even consider it. No, you know what? It's been a year that he's approaching me, but I've had guys on and off. But you know what? The the thing that you say, single, never date single mothers because you will never be the first in their life. It's so true. I ne 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 never gave any man a chance because of my daughter. She's number one. Right. And because of that, I don't have a relationship. I can't have a relationship with anybody else. Well, and you, I so this. you can date people uh, when I it's date. convenient. Yeah. Yeah, I date, and that's fine. I accept that. And you've been, pre by the way, you've been pretty happy. I have been. Well, if you're happy, why would you want to screw with it? Because he says, he says you're not giving your daughter a I chance. I don't care what he says. He left. He had his chance. Oh, Tom, you're, you're like saying my words that I've been telling him for a year now. He had his shot. Let him be on and off somebody else. All right. I, that's what I feel. I keep resisting it. I keep pushing him back. But well, well you're going to stop discussing it. You're going to tell him the discussion is over. Okay, so I'm not being a bad parent to my child by no. not wanting the family to be back together. No, because it, this is a screwed up family, okay? He's a dad. He has a right to see his daughter. Fantastic. And he comes and he does that good. Yeah. But uh, Mr. On and Off uh, should not be in a relationship with you. All right. Thank you, Tom. I'm here to help, dear. Thank you. Bye. Appreciate the call. Okay. <laughs> wow. one eight hundred five eight hundred. tom It's Like Us 101. I am your professor. This is Rachel. Hello. Hi, Ra I mean, hi, Tom. <laughs> hi, Tom. Hi. Yes. Hi, how are you? You don't really care. You're just killing time. No, I really do care. All right. Well. You're doing, you're doing good? I am doing fantastic. Well, great. So, Tom, I was calling to say to you that I don't think that you should be so pessimistic about love. Pessimistic? Pessimistic. Maybe I should call an exterminator for that. Pessimistic. Oh, for pessimistic. Calling... Yes, yes. That's Why not? I no, I don't think that you should be so down on love. I mean, people find each other and, and you know, connect. And I'm not down on love. I'm down married. on relationships and marriage. I'm, I'm, I think love is fantastic. Well, yeah, I know. And I, I guess, like, the only thing I agree with you, because, like, I started listening to you because uh, my husband listened to you, and I started listening to you. And I do agree with a lot of what you say, but I disagree with, you know, a lot of what you say as well. And sometimes I definitely feel like I, I think you're kind of down on, you know, love, like people finding each other and loving each other and getting married. And, I know, and so you, but you're lumping thing. a bunch of things together. I'm down on marriage. Well, I don't know. It's not Are the you? same as being down on love. Well, I think so. I think marriage and love go together. So No, they, they don't. I, they, I'll give you an example. Is your mom alive? Yes. Do you love her? I do. Are you married to her? No. You just said love and marriage go together. Well, not necessarily. You just said they go together. Well, I said they do because they do, but they no, don't. No, but they, do, but they don't have to. They don't have to. They don't have to. Well, okay. I think that for the most part... There are plenty of people you love that you're not married to. I love all my family and friends. There you go. And you're not married to any of them. That's right. No, I'm not. So but love and marriage married, don't go together. Do love and love marriage don't go together. Married. Love and marriage don't go together the way you say they do. Well, I would hope they do. What do you think people get married for? They're stupid. No, they get married for love. So they get married because they're stupid. No, that's not true. Yeah, yeah, the actually. They might make the decisions when they're married. Or no, getting married for a, for a man, getting married is a stupid decision. Why is that? Because a man gets no benefit out of being married. He gets there's nothing he gets from being married that he can't get without being married. Well, that's your point of view, but a so lot that's of how it is. No, but a lot of men get companionship. Lots of men have companionship right now. They've got people they date. They've got girlfriends. They've got companionship. 
Right, but it's not the same when you're married. Yeah, it's actually, different. if you take it for if you yeah, take yeah, it you know how it's different. If we've now si- we've now signed a contract to give you half of everything we earn. That's how it's different. I, that's the only difference. Other than that, it's the same. No, it's not the yes, same. Yes, it is. The same would be, you know, it's different in the way that when you love someone and you marry them, and you marry them for loving them, you make it for the rest of your life. Like, unlike But it's you, not the rest of your life. Forty-five percent of all is for life for some people, and for a lot of people, it's not. Right, but but you know, but a lot of people are happy that way, and I'm not saying they should be happy that way when they're 19 or 20 or 21, even to like 25. I would say when I when guys I'm would be a lot happier if they resisted the urge and did not get married, because then they would not be obligated to pay your bills. That you're speaking from that's because you're bitter because you've been married as many. Uh, no, times dear, as it's, uh, but I'm not bitter. You don't understand. You. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life, and I harbor no ill will to anyone I was married to. No bitter. And in fact, I talked to most of them. Well, that's that's great. So there is no, but but dear, you have me completely wrong. You have me completely wrong. Uh, There is no bitterness here. Adam, (laughs) if you curse again, you're gone. If you curse again, you're gone. I won't curse again. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. But are you kidding me? You're not bitter? No. Seriously. No. I mean, a lot of what I hear you say, I agree with. And I told you that. And a lot I am of not you bitter. I am not bitter. How many times are you going to repeat the same thing? I am not bitter, period. Move on. Okay, fine. You're not bitter. Fine. Okay, we'll move on. Well, I was saying in the very beginning that marriage, when you marry someone, it's because you love Shut them up. and because you want Shut to make up. your life with them. Shut and that isn't wrong. And the Shut fact up. that it didn't work out with Shut you. Up. Ew. I'm sorry? Ew. 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 What? Okay, look, Tom, I do like you, okay, despite everything I've said. I listen to your radio show because you happen to be entertaining in some random way. And I'm really happy that you made your... There we go. Nice talking to you, darling. You and your filthy mouth. Unbelievable. Piece of work. You're bitter. You're bitter. But you're bitter because you're bitter. Because you're bitter. You're bitter. You are bitter. And because you're bitter. And you know why you're the way you are? Because you're bitter. You're bitter. Bitter, 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 bitter. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! one 800 5800 tom is our telephone number. Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, hi, Tom. This is Tony. How are you? I'm doing okay, Tony. Good, good. Hey, listen, I have a question. Uh, first of all, love your show. I uh, wish I would have been listening to you for, gosh, ever, uh, I guess before, obviously, I got married. Uh, real quick, uh, you know, I dated this girl. We met at the bank. Uh, we were together for about a year, and she lived with me. And so, anyway, so she got pregnant. We got married in Vegas. Why'd you let that happen? That's a good question. Mm-hmm. And so, anyway, so we got married, and I guess the reason why I decided to get married because I wanted to, you know, show that, you know, following a good role and leading a good life for myself. So you thought you were doing, quote unquote, doing the right thing, which is almost always the wrong thing. Go ahead. <laughs> right. And uh, so, anyway. Bottom line is we don't get along. Uh, we, you know, definitely obviously got married for the wrong reason. And, you know, she's, I just, all I expect of her is to clean up, do her motherly things, take care of her son, you know, that type of thing. And, you know, me make the money, come back home, have a warm dinner. That'd be nice. But uh, it doesn't happen that way. And, you know, so I tell her about it. She gets mad. Argument starts up again, you know, so... Uh, I'm just really, uh, you know, debating on, you know, should I just, you know, get out of this thing? Cut your losses. <clears throat> yeah. I, you know, that's what I'm thinking, too. Uh, you know. Uh, Shouldn't have gotten married in the first place. Could have had an abortion. Yeah, you know, and I brought that up, and, you know, she uh, wasn't up for that, you know. All right. And, Could have paid your child support, and, uh, you know, if you chose to be around, be around. But you did not have to get married. You know what I'm talking about. Shut up! The 
Tom Likas Show.